Attorney Meyer. Uh, yes. It, it, is it fair to say that these documents, to the best of your knowledge, represent the only interactions you had with any members of the defendants during the time frame covered by these documents, which is essentially from March of 2015 to August of 2015. And if you want to look at these first, I'm happy to have you do that before answering. I've already looked at them, thank you. So these, this, these are basically the records, to the best of your knowledge, of all of the interactions you had with the defendants during this time frame from March to, October, from March to August 2015. I, 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 it's possible that I might have missed a few days meeting that, only that notation about that interaction. All right, well, putting aside the possibility you might have missed a couple of days, this, these basically represent the days that you had interactions with the defendants in the March to August time frame. Approximately, yes. Now, if any of the defendants had said something to you on those dates that was particularly intimidating, or if they had physically interfered with your work or done some other something of that nature, would you have made a note of that? That would have been included in just this citing, but not that detailed as for word for word, no. But would you have made some reference, you know, if, if they'd done something in, that was you regarded as being particularly objectionable, would you have made some reference to that in this report? I think that's probably what the bad day meant. All right, so something happened on that bad day, but you don't recall what it was. I'm, I'm sure it, it, I'm sure it was probably. All right, but again, I don't, I don't want you to speculate. I'm okay, just, I'm, but I'm trying to. I know, but you, you, either you recall what happened on that day or you don't. That specific words on that specific day, I do not. Now, is it fair to say that of all of the notations for, in time frame, March through August 2015, it's only that one day do you make reference to a bad day or anything like a bad day. Every other notation you simply mention either Garrett, Garrett and the pink-haired lady um, and the dates. And I think on one occasion you mentioned that Mr. Ian is, um, has a video. And again, I'm happy to have you look at this if it helps your recollection. I, as far I, as I can tell, that one bad day, or you have it in front of you. Right. It's only that one day in which you make a reference to a negative, a particularly negative interaction. Right. Is that correct? Well, it doesn't lessen the fact uh, that the so rest of the day. Exactly, Your Honor. She's no. trying to answer the no, question. No, it was, yeah, you have to respond to the specific question that was posed. Right. The bad day probably referred. No, my question was was I didn't I, I already asked you about the bad day. I'm simply my question was no other entry reflects any type of negative action or statement in terms of your interaction with Mr. Ian on that day. And I'm, all I'm of these. Have, about, I'm asking you about this document. All of these have negative. I'm not asking. That's not my question. My question was that your notation on these documents only contains one negative reference for the entire time frame. Is that correct or not? That's correct. And it says now, bad day. Now, excuse me, that was my question. Your Honor, okay. No, no, no. Now she, she, can, she can finish her answer well, but, to that. But, Your Honor, I think there's a difference between finishing an answer and engaging an argument. They're entitled to cross-examine her. To, to do some redirect. I, I, I agree, but, but I think there was something more you wanted to say in response to, to, that, to that question. I'm going to give you that opportunity. What more did you want to say? He, that he's specifically referring to that one day, that day, that I wrote bad day. Now, is it correct? There is no reference in any of these documents to Defendant James Cleveland. Have you had any Robin Hooding interactions with Mr. Cleveland since October of 2013? There was a one occasion. It was during their intervention, which is, I can't recall what month it is, but they should know. Uh, he was here with some people that evidently he, they were invited to participate in their Robin Hood actions. 
So to the best of your recollection, since October of 2013, you've had one interaction with Mr. Cleveland. That's correct. Since October 2013, have you had any interactions with Kate Ager? Negative, none. Since October 2013, have you had any interactions with Graham Colson? By inter describe interaction. Well, have you had any involvement? Has he engaged in anything that would be described as Robin Hooding activity no. in your presence? No. Has Mr. Iyer, since October 2013, engaged in any Robin Hooding activity in your presence? No, and I answered negative the first time. Now, in terms of the um, Mr. Freeman, um, the, we, the, a video was shown involving yourself and Mr. Freeman. Now, do I accurately understand that during the course of that interview that you were walking on a sidewalk? I was on the sidewalk. Mr. Freeman was not on that sidewalk, correct? At times. Well, he was. He was actually. We say at times. What do you mean by that? There's a there's grass and there's sidewalks, so he could have been. He was on the sidewalk at times, not exclusively. Well, during the most of the time shown by the video, where was he located? There's a uh, a, a, a cemented path that leads up to the sidewalk. He was there, and then as I tried walking south which is past the college, he would be running in the grass area where the meters are located. So there is a grassy area between the sidewalk where you were stationed and the meters, correct? That's correct. It's a fairly wide grassy area? Yes. And that's where he was located? Yes. And at any time did he physically block you? Physically block me. You mean did he physically step in front of me? And yes. No, but I wouldn't say he stepped directly in front of me within a hand's length, but I didn't feel that it wasn't a possibility, and that's why I kept turning away. So he didn't actually step in front of you, but you were concerned that he might? Is that a fair statement? Yes. Now, getting back to Mr. Ian for a minute, there was number of questions made or to you earlier during direct examination about Mr. Ian following you. Isn't it correct that for the large majority of the time when Mr. Ian is engaging in Robin Hood activity that he's not behind you but in front of you? Both. Isn't he primarily in front of you trying to stay, um, trying to essentially go to the meter to place quarters in the meter as you're heading towards the meter? He can be, yes. That's, that's what, where he's most of the time, correct? I'm not yes. saying he never is behind you, but he's mostly in front of you, not following you anywhere. Right, if, is he, if he isn't looking for me. Well, in other words, once he finds you doing your job, then where he primarily tries to station himself is in front of you so he can get to the meter and put stickers on the car windshields, etc. Yes, that's correct. Now, you made a comment earlier in your direct examination about essentially being felt that you were being subject to verbal assaults and you were frustrated because you could, you're not able to express yourself. Now, are you prohibited by anybody from expressing yourself? Expressing myself? Yes. I mean, as you are today in the courtroom. And the I, phrase express yourself was one you use. I'll tell you why I don't want to. Right. When well, well, excuse me, I, I'm, you're going to have a chance to do that, but my question is, are you prohibited from, and we'll get there, are you prohibited from any, by anybody from expressing yourself? 
it's been suggested that it's better not to engage and I use the word engage meaning I, I don't want to start a back and forth in an argument because it, it's just I don't want to do that so you have it has been suggested to you better not to argue with the Robin Hooders I don't want to anyway you have decided not to argue with them yes but you're, there's nothing prohibiting you from arguing with them if you choose to argue I don't like the word argue talk with converse maybe you're not you're no well do you I'm not I, I'm not because of everything that's gone on I have no I have no desire you don't want to talk to them basically no okay. but you're in no way prevented from talking to them no Now, in terms of numbers of people, you um, have cited um, in this time frame from March to August that um, Mr. Ian, on occasion, Mr. Ian and a female with pink hair. Has there ever been more than two people? Yes. When? Off and on. There's no reference in here during this time frame to more than two people. It right? might be just somebody on the street that joins in with them, but it's very brief. But in terms of on, a, on an ongoing basis, it's tip never been more than two people in this time frame. Is that in correct? this time frame, yeah. And most of the time, it's Mr. Ian by himself. Most of the time. Now, you testified again about the video involving Mr. Freeman. Uh, how many times, um, going back over two years, has Mr. Freeman? engaged in Robin Hood activity when you were personally involved? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Yes, how many times has Mr. Freeman engaged in Robin Hooding activity with you during the last two years? Many. Recall, Pardon me? If you remember. I do remember. How many? A specific number. That's what I'm asking you. Yeah, I can't give you a specific number. I can just say it's been more than a dozen times. More than a dozen times? Yeah. More than two dozen times? No. So somewhere between one dozen and two dozen times over the course of two years. You know, quite honestly, I haven't counted them. Now, the video, what you, te you testified earlier that, some, that you saw Mr. Freeman on the other side of the street before the video started? Say that again? You testified that you saw Mr. Freeman on the other side of the street before the video started, is that correct? No, we were on the same side, and I crossed over. I right, see, so you crossed over to avoid him. Yes. And then he began, fil then somebody began filming? Yes. And now that film was been represented by Attorney Deedle to have lasted four minutes. Is that correct? At least that's what you heard him say, right? If it says four minutes, it seemed a lot longer to me at the time. But you would agree, based on what's now been represented, that the interaction lasted what it shows, yes, approximately four minutes. Yes. Your Honor, if I might clarify since Attorney Meyer is describing what uh, he believes I represented, what I think I said was that the video itself was approximately four minutes. That's I right. asked Lynn how long she remembered the interaction, which is broader than the video. I know, but I, I simply at well, now you're arguing. I understand. I understand. And, and I, I don't want speaking objections like that uh, with, with, with that relate to the substance of a witness's testimony. If there's going to be a speaking objection like that, going to be an objection why don't counsel ask to approach I know we did that a little bit but if it's going to relate to the substance of testimony then then I'd like it to be done at the I bench understand, Your Honor. I was just thank you no, no I understand not, not a problem
Thank you, Your Honor. I have no further questions. Can you redirect? Just briefly, Your Honor. Lynn, you were asked by Attorney Meyer about your interactions with the public. Are there other members of the public that follow you around in the way that you've described Garrett Ian following you around? No. Do you have the same sort of discussions and conversations with them as you do with Mr. Ian? No. We've talked about the GAP report, and Your Honor, I think given the amount that it's been discussed at this point, I'd, I'd move that it be entered as a full exhibit. Any, any objection? Well, yeah, Your Honor, it's not clear to me whether, um, are we talking about the, the original documents that were submitted, or the, as I understand that they've now submitted a, a more extensive? I, I took that to mean that the document that was originally discussed. Right. I, mean, I, I thought the understanding was that I was going to sort of review them at some later recess, and presumably, I mean, I, I would guess, I would suggest that the issue of their admissibility or lack of admissibility be addressed later. I'm not going to claim it's being waived. What I would propose, Your Honor, to clarify is that they be entered as a full exhibit as the documents that were used to refresh Lynn's recollection. And we will be providing Attorney Meyer with the complete report, and if he'd like to enter that as a full exhibit, he'll certainly have the opportunity to do so. You know, I, I have no objection to them being entered. Okay. okay. Uh, Plans exhibit number two is a full exhibit. So we were just talking about the gap reports. Um, are these the only interactions that you've had with the respondents in the last two years? To the best of my memory, like I said, I might have not written it down on a few occasions, whether it was be I was in a hurry or whatnot, but um, there, that's approximately. Let me ask you then, um, the video we watched, you testified earlier that that was in the, I think you said the late summer of 2014. It was summer. Is that in the gap reports, the ones that we've discussed today that we've marked as exhibit two? <laughs> The gap report, it's already stipulated the gap report only covers March to August of 2015. So how could a video from 2014 be included there? If you'd like to stipulate that uh, the gap reports are not comprehensive of all the interactions she's had, I would agree to that. I would absolutely stipulate that the gap reports are only intended to cover the period of March to April, uh, um, August 2015. Thank you. You were asked about a specific, to name a specific number of times that this has happened. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Does, no, no, I, I don't, I, I think I asked, as I recall, I asked her how many times she had had an interaction with Mr. Freeman. I think that, I I think her, that was the specific question. I it didn't wasn't. ask about in terms of Mr. Ian, and I, I didn't ask for an overall number. I think that's, that's fair. Do these interactions have a cumulative effect on you? 